Hey guys, Jin here, and welcome back to another episode of Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. Got a new setup, got a green screen, it's super exciting. Um, I'm still working on the lighting and stuff, I got a bit of a shadow in behind me. It's not perfect, but uh, it should work for now at least. Uh, we're going to continue where we left off, digging into the files, and working on another side story today, which is really exciting. We have a new email from Paula Miner. She has an actual last name now. Paula was one of the ones that we met pretty early on. I think one of the first names we got. Staying focused on our goals. As a reminder, to help guide our data collection, any analysis performed should be focused on answering some of these main questions. How does granted elevated access to the VM affect a person's emotional state? How does granting elevated access to the VM affect a person's values and goals? How does someone effectively navigate and experiment with their ability to change the contents of their VM? How is it elevated access being weaponized? What actions and values most contribute to the destruction of the universe? Most importantly, how might you your observations apply to our own universe? Bonus, how can we present this to our management as an operation that benefits the company? Unrelated note, whoever changed the color scheme on the desktop to pink, can you please change it back? It's unprofessional and it runs the risk of drawing eyes. Uh, yeah, yeah. All that explains why everything's pink. Uh, did we get any new pictures? Did we get any new pictures? I don't think we did. If you don't remember in the last episode, this happened. It was really emotional, really sad. Uh, if you missed that, be sure to check it out. There's a playlist. And we're going to be continuing. We're going to get another new side story today. We got this one. Yeah, we looked at all, all these already. Uh, if I remember. Uh, some of these actually might have been new. Uh, attempt to load a save file after COA's death. I don't think we had that one initially. Um, I feel like there was another one that I got. Let's go for the special ending. Press the skip button while Monica's talking. Tell Sue where you'd still walk home with her. Yeah, okay. So, uh, I got, I tried to get some of the achievements and I was working on some of the, the secret poems since last time. I did a couple of these because it randomly selects three. So, you basically just have to replay the game over and over and over until you get them all. So, we'll take a look at all those once I finish that. I'm just doing that in my free time. But uh, yeah, without further ado, let's hop into a side story. Today it is Yuri and Sayori understanding. Exciting. Oh, cool. This continues right where it left off. I was wondering how that was going to work. Because the last one was purely Sayori and Monica. So I was wondering if these were going to be like individual stories, like focusing on two characters, or if it was going to be like an overarching thing. I did not expect it to be overarching and to continue. So that's really cool. The club meeting is suddenly interrupted by the sound of the door, causing Monica and Sayori to turn their heads. The door opens halfway and then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. New music and adorable Yuri's. I'm excited. Awkward silence ensues. The music is really nice, though. Suri's eyes widen, recognizing the girl. She's very conspic. She very conspicuously mouths to Monica. It's her. It's the girl. It's true. The girl standing in the doorway is none other than the girl that Suri had come across reading alone in a classroom. Thanks to Monica leaving the flyer on her desk, it seems she found her way into the club. Are you? You here for the literature club by any chance? Um, am I in the wrong place? No, you're not. This is the literature club. Please come inside. The girl fully steps in the door, but continues standing against the wall, avoiding eye contact. Sayori continues to fail, containing her excitement. It's happening. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Sorry it's a little empty. Um, I'm Monica, and this is Sayori, and we run the literature club. Even though it's just us so far, but what's your name, by the way? I'd like to join your club. Uh, already? Wait, really? Are you sure? I 
I mean, I, sh I should be good enough. <laughs> Everyone is welcome here. You don't have to be good enough. Oh. Um, do you want to have a seat? We'd love to get to know you. The girl nods, sliding over to a nearby desk and gently sitting down. So, what's your name? Yuri. I'm Sayori, and this is Monica. Sayori, I already... Nice to meet you. Um, do you like fantasy? Like, books? Yuri looks at Monica. Fantasy is cool. Yes. Have you heard of Annabelle Dupont? Dupont? Uh, I can't say that I have. Oh, well, she's my favorite author. I'm on her fifth book, and it's just... Yuri grins and presses her knuckles against her cheeks in joy. Oh, this is really cute. You can borrow my books, I wouldn't mind. You're really in for an incredible experience. Um... Monica stammers, completely caught off guard by Yuri taking control of the conversation. So am I. I was not expecting her to just jump right into the swing of things. Wow. You go, Yuri. She glances sideways at Sayori, silently asking for help. I'd love to. It sounds like you're really into them, so they must be great. I am so happy I found this club. Oh, uh, I'm so stupid. I, I left all my other books in my locker. I should have brought them. Yuri quickly stands up. I'll be right back. I'll go get them for you. Uh, you probably only need to bring one for now. Sayori nervously says that, noting to herself the considerable heftiness of the book that Yuri set down on her desk. True. Uh, okay, I'll go get the first one then. Yuri exits the classroom in a flash, leaving Monica and Sayori silently exchanging glances. Oh my god, I wasn't prepared for this. How do I handle someone so intense? I have, like, no experience with fantasy, except maybe stuff that I read when I was a kid, but that's probably like a joke compared to what she's into. I'm sure it'll be fine. In fact, I think it's neat when we have different people who are into different kinds of literature. It'll be fun to learn from each other. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree, but what if this is her only interest? Doesn't it kind of seem like that? Monica, don't you think you should be more optimistic? We have a new club member. There shouldn't be room for anything but being happy. I'm excited to get to know her more, aren't you? Yeah, I guess you're right. Sorry for being so hasty. I just got really anxious all of a sudden. It's because you're afraid of not being able to take the lead. <laughs> what the heck? It's kind of scary how you can point things out like that, Sayori. I just like learning what makes people happy or sad. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You'd probably be great at helping Yuri feel comfortable here. Maybe you could take a break from helping me with the administrative stuff and just focus on spending time with her. Yay, that's exactly what I want to do. Okay, so I was wondering how this was going to work. This makes a lot of sense. So it continues the story, and then we branch off to just the two people that we're focusing on and get to know them personally better. That's really cool. I like this. I'm glad that there's still like somewhat of a continuation but it looks like we're still going to get a lot of time dedicated just to just the two individual people for each each side story, which is exactly what I wanted. Besides, Sayori lowers her voice. I'm probably going to need all the time I can get. She taps her fingers against the dauntingly chunky book that Yuri left sitting on the desk. Right afterwards, the door opens to reveal Yuri's return. I'm back. Her breath is slightly heavy, which, combined with her short time gone, indicates that she may have ran at least part of the way. She makes her way back over to Sayori and sets the book down on her desk. Just as Sayori feared, the book Yuri brought for her is just about equal size to the one already on Yuri's desk. Well, there are probably a few things you should know before getting started on it. There are some things that are more explained in other books that take place in the same universe, so going over those would be good to keep you from getting confused at the start. Uh, um... Sayori nervously interjects. Well, I was thinking maybe today we could just get to know each other a little bit more. You know, I think, like, if we're going to be reading together, then I would like that. From across the room, Monica smiles and nods at Sayori while Yuri isn't looking. Uh, oh, uh, okay. Yuri sits down and looks at her book, then glances around the room, showing no indication that she has anything more to add. So, what made you decide to want to join the club? Well, I like reading, so I was immediately interested. 
I had no idea that someone was starting a literature club, but that's my fault since I haven't been paying any attention to any of the club recruitment advertisements. I only found out because she... Uh... Yuri glances over at Monica. Monica? Monica came into my classroom and put the flyer on my desk. Suddenly, Yuri's face darkens and she shakes her head at herself. I was so stupid. I got too nervous and I couldn't even look up, so she just walked out. It took me several days just to come here because I was afraid that Monica told everyone how inconsiderate I was, but I decided that was probably irrational. Wait, no, that was totally my fault. I felt so bad about interrupting you that I just, like, walked out. I was actually really hoping you would come by. Yuri exhales in relief. I always seem to interpret things as the worst possible scenario. Well, I was really nervous to come here for some other reasons too, such as there being too many people. Not that I mind that much, but I have a really hard time having to meet a large number of new people at once. So it's actually amazing that it's just the two of you. I definitely came at the right time. Aw, that makes me happy. I'm proud of you for working up the courage to come. Yuri smiles warmly to herself. I never really had the privilege of sharing my interests with others before. It's so hard to find others who are into the same thing I am, except online. So I thought the Literature Club would provide a chance for me to do that. What kinds of other things are you into? Like genres? I don't know, just anything, even if it's not literature. Oh, uh, just things you would think are dumb. Suri pauses, a look of concern on her face. Oh, look at that sad little Suri facial expression. This makes me a little sad. How about I tell you something I'm into, and then you can tell me about something you're into? I suppose that would be okay. Okay. Well, I'm pretty into, like, crafty things. Like, making cute little collages or decorating things, like cards or jewelry boxes. My room's always cluttered with random stuff because I keep buying things to make gifts for my friends. But then I put it off to the last minute. <laughs> So, yeah, that's something kind of silly that I'm into. You sound quite creative. Not that much, it's just you'd be surprised by how much you can do with scissors and glue and stuff. So, I have to share something that I'm into now, right? Suri nods. Um, well, I guess I'm into nature. I love nature. Monica, I'm going to start a nature club. <laughs> no, you're not. You're stuck here with me now. <laughs> Uh-oh. I am not. Oh yeah? Well, I hereby appoint you as Vice President of the Literature Club. There, now you're stuck with me. Hey, don't give me responsibilities. Oh, I'm sorry, Yuri, I interrupted you. Go ahead. It's fine. Yuri pauses, feeling awkward after having got cut off. I like going out into the woods or to the park or just places where you can walk and walk or sit and not have any people around. It's peaceful. Just nice to kind of remove myself from everything that matters and let my racing mind operate autonomously, autonomously for a while. When do you like to do that? It just depends on my mood. After school, on the weekends, whenever I feel I need it. Wow, I feel like I would never have time to do something like that. I find that we have a lot more time than we think we do if you don't let it slip through your fingers. Three continue their conversation, led primarily by Sayori, but with Monica chiming in every now and then as well. Monica intended to leave it to Sayori and focus on her own work, but she found it difficult not to join in. Before they knew it, the end of the day was upon them once more. Oh, it looks like we should be wrapping up for today. So are you two going to be starting on that book next club meeting? That's the plan. I'm so excited. Sayori beams, and Yuri collects her things. Once packed, Yuri wordlessly waves to Sayori and Monica with a gentle smile. Bye! As Yuri exits, Sayori enthusiastically returns her farewell. Once again, Sayori and Monica are left in the clubroom. Sayori, you are a lifesaver. <laughs> I didn't do anything, I just talked. Still. Besides, it really lifted my mood. It feels really nice when I can put my energy towards other people like that. She was really excited to be included, you know? It made me happy. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that she'll have a great time here, with you engaging her. How are you feeling about starting the book with her next meeting? I'm kind of scared, but I think she'll be happy as long as I'm trying my best. I think you'll do great. 
After the surprise of a new club member, it seems like everyone has their spirits lifted with something new to look forward to. Oh, well, that was really nice. That was really wholesome. You're reintroduced to the club. Another school day ends. Swallowing her anxiety, Yuri makes her way to the club room, expecting to be the last one to arrive. As she opens the door, she's surprised to find only Sayori in the club room. Really? Only Sayori? Okay, even I'm surprised. Sayori's always late. It's club time again! Monica went to the computer lab, so it's just us today. Is that okay? Okay, so... She wasn't... Yuri was technically last then. Monica was here early and then already left. Wow. Yuri silently nods, unable to make eye contact. Um, I'm sorry about yesterday. Hmm? Yuri tilts her head, unsure of exactly what Yuri's talking about. Well, I mean, the way I got overly excited to share my books and how you had to stop me so we could talk first. It was so inconsiderate of me. I got too excited and forgot to think about everyone else in the club, so... <laughs> Yuri, you didn't do anything wrong. I thought it was cute how excited you were. Well, still, I think... I think I changed my mind about the book. You don't have to read it. Huh? Why? Because... I know that you were just humoring me anyway. In retrospect, it's rather obvious that nobody was truly interested. But... If you like it so much, then it must be worth sharing. I've already decided that I'll join the club, so you don't have to try so hard to entice me. That's not what I was doing. A moment of uncomfortable silence stretches between the two of them. Um, well, the thing is, we don't even have any club activities yet. I mean, Monica and I have just been working on recruitment stuff, mostly. So it just sounded like something fun that we could do together. Reading your books. You know, like, as a club activity. That would be okay, right? Why am I being so resistant to this anyway? It's exactly what I wanted in the first place, and you're being so nice about it. I really don't know what's wrong with me. I'm sorry for being like this. You don't have to apologize. Just tell me if there's anything I can do to help you feel more comfortable here. Hmm. Siri pulls her desk up against Yuri's and sits next to her. The book in question is already on Yuri's desk. Peering over, Siori reads the cover of the book. Dusk Bell, part one of the Everlast Saga. <laughs> it's Dusk Bell by Annabelle. Sorry, I'm ready now. Oh, right, I should probably get some paper. Yuri grabs a spiral notebook of hers and tears out a few sheets of paper. Wait, how come you need paper? Oh, it's uh, useful to draw things out sometimes, like maps, timelines, family trees, or just for taking notes. Notes? <laughs> Sorry, looks the most shocked that she's ever been in her entire life. Uh, I mean, hmm, yes, that's an effective strategy. Exactly. I'm sure it will be especially helpful for someone new to the genre. Shuri's joke completely flew over Yuri's head. But thinking about it, she decides it's probably for the best that it did. Well, I'm not used to having company like this, but I'll try to help make it as accessible as possible. I trust you. You're like super smart. Oh, please. Yuri tries to dismiss the compliment, but she can't hide her smile and light blush. You can't generalize intelligence. I'm only in smart in the things that I have a lot of experience with. Contrarily, I'm awful at anything involving real people. That should be evident enough from the two days I've spent here so far. So in my eyes, it's everyone else who comes off as smart. Especially you. No! Sayori rubs her shoulders against Yuri's. You're such a sweetheart when you're not being shy. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, I feel like Sayori knows exactly what she's doing and also is totally oblivious at the same time. It's great. Anyway, would, would you like to get started? <laughs> yeah, okay. After the minor diversion between them, the two get back on track with their plan of activity. Yuri begins to guide Sayori through the basics of the fantasy world her story takes place in. The more of it she details, the races, factions, history, elements of magic, the more questions Sayori seems to have. But despite Sayori's expectations, Yuri eloquently guides her through it in a way that's such in a way such that it's fun to follow along. 
it becomes evident that the world building aspect of the story, not just the story itself, is one that Yuri finds Yuri finds her passion leans towards. How do people come up with this stuff? It's like the exact opposite of the kind of writing I do. What kind of writing? Oh, like poetry and stuff like that. Things I write are just like putting down the feelings that come into my head, you know? But this is like, there must be so much planning, hard work. Ah, you're into poetry. I think there's an appendix that includes some of the kingdom's written works, like poetry and folk songs. No way! <laughs> Yuri giggles, filling Suri's heart with happiness when she realizes it's the first time she's heard Yuri laugh. It means Yuri must be having fun. Anyway, I think we can get started reading now if you're ready. Okay, but I can't read very fast. Oh, that's fine. I'm very patient. Patience is something I pride myself in. Hmm, I see. Suri jots down, Yuri is patient, into her notes. Hey, that's for the book! <laughs> that wasn't really Yuri's voice, but it's fine. I'm just kidding. But I'm kind of glad you're patient, because I need that sometimes. A lot of times. Suri flips through the first few pages of the book, getting past the table of contents. Okay, chapter one. The room becomes silent as the two of them begin to read. But... The silence, only lasts for, the silence only lasts for a moment before Sayori speaks up again. What does vindicated mean? Ah, well, in this context, it essentially means that he was proven innocent. It's okay to ask questions, right? Of course. Sayori turns the page. Are these footnotes? Mm-hmm. A lot of the dialogue has cultural references that require explanation to be understood. Hmm. The two continue reading. Yuri's relaxed expression remains unchanged. Meanwhile, Sayori's expression grows tense as she tries to make her way through the dense text. Up until now, their expressions had been reversed, with Sayori easily navigating social situations and Yuri struggling in them. But the tables have turned. Wait, are they talking about the past right now, or the present? Wait, right here. They're talking about the past. These paragraphs are describing a flashback that Bar Barnes is having. But they didn't tell me that. It's implied from the context. Sayori rubs her temples. The two of them continue with Sayori asking fewer questions. She begins to understand the value in the notes as she finds herself referring to them somewhat often and even adding to them. But her reduction in questions comes not from her getting used to the reading, but rather from her fearing she'll come across as stupid. Oh, poor Sayori. At last, she reaches the end of the chapter. I think we can stop here for now. Okay. Sora takes a deep breath and closes what little of the book she's gotten through so far. So, what are your thoughts up until this point? Um. Sora tries to find words. Am I doing well so far? Hmm? I'm not sure I understand. Well, I don't know. When it takes me so long to read and understand things, it makes me feel really dumb. But I really like how into it you get. It makes me want to keep going and keep doing my best so I can see it the way that you do. Hmm. The relaxation in Yuri's expression fades. I see. She quietly gathers her things. We can continue tomorrow, right? Yuri pauses and then shakes her head. We can do something else tomorrow. But, I'm sorry. W wait, sorry for what? I don't understand. I'm sorry. I don't want to do this anymore. That's all. I'm sorry that I made you. Yuri leaves. You weren't making me. Oh. Sayori's left alone with her words. How did this happen? We were having fun just a second ago. It's my fault. I said something stupid and I hurt her. I should have just told her that I enjoyed it. Monica trusted me with this. It's the only thing I'm good at and I still messed it up. What if she doesn't want to come back? Drowned in guilt, Sayori stares blankly at her desk, spread with notes. The book sits next to them. Right. If she wasn't coming back, then she wouldn't have left the book here, right? Unless she just forgot to take it with her. Ugh, this is horrible. Was it really because she thought I wasn't enjoying our time together? Or maybe she wasn't enjoying our time together because I'm not good enough? I probably let her down so much by having so much trouble following along. Yeah, I'm sure if I was smarter, she would be having so much more fun. I need to do better for her. 
I'm gonna say Ori. She's always pushing herself for other people. Oh. Hug energy. That was that's a good. Um, was that the new song or is that one of the ones we've got? Nope. Remember the names of the ones we've gotten and the ones we haven't. We're still on the lookout for a specific song, so we have that to get to. Oh, we got the we got the Yuri wallpaper. Very cute. Any other new pictures? Any other new pictures? Nope. All right, then let us continue with understanding part two. For the first time, Sayori is the first to enter the club room. Anxiety courses through her relentlessly. Will Yuri show up today? Sitting at a desk, she stamps her feet in an attempt to calm down. Why am I letting this affect me so much? I'm doing everything I can to make Yuri happy. But my best wasn't good enough. But it was still my best. But I'm letting everyone down. I'm always just a disappointment. Sayori continues to wrestle with her self-deprecating thoughts. Every tiny noise causes her to lift her head in anticipation of Yuri's arrival. I really hope Yuri shows up today. Minutes pass and nobody enters the club room. Not Yuri or Monica. Gosh, I'm so late. Why did I offer to help those other students with their work? Such a pushover sometimes. It's going to leave a bad impression on my club new club members like Yuri if I'm not the first one there. Monica rounds the corner, approaching the club room. As she does so, Yuri? Ah! Yuri jumps at the sound of Monica's voice. She's sitting out the, outside the club room against the wall next to the door. Embarrassed, she quickly closes the book she was reading and stands up. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry I'm late. You didn't have to wait outside for me. The door to the club room is open. It's not... Yuri stammers, unable to explain herself. She peers inside the club room through the window and looks away. Actually, I was just wondering if I could help you today instead. Huh? Me? With club publicity stuff? Yes. Monica is utterly confused. Why is Yuri asking this all of a sudden when she was so eager to spend time with Sayori before? Did they not get along after all? Monica looks into the club room herself to see Sayori sitting alone inside. Uh, okay. It's kind of a simple job, but I'd be happy for you to tag along. Me too. Monica's worried, but she finds it difficult to insert herself into whatever conflict that may have arisen. It's a little ironic, she realizes, that she could be so conflict-avoiding after having been in the debate club. Okay, let's take a walk together. I just have to make copies of this new flyer, then go around to the billboards and replace the old ones with the new ones. Yuri nods, and the two set off. The two walk in silence. Without Sayori, Monica finds it difficult to strike up conversation. So, uh, how's everything been going? Uh, fine. That's good. Neither of them follow up with anything more. Monica tenses up at the stinted conversation. How the heck does Sayori do it? Uh, I'm sorry I didn't see you yesterday. I went straight to the computer lab to work on the flyers. Mm-hmm, Sayori told me. What did you two end up doing yesterday? Uh, just some reading. Oh, I'm glad. It's really starting to feel more like a literature club now. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I felt so intimidated at first when I heard about the kind of reading you were into. But, you know, it's kind of stupid of me because I'm just intimidated by things I'm not good at. And it's silly to assume everyone who comes to the club will just have the same interest as me. But it's so cool that you're able to get Sayori into it. It's like the club is working. I'm really happy about that. She's not into it huh she's not into it and i'm stupid for forcing it onto her yuri falls silent again as if she started her thought but can't figure out how to continue it did something happen uh, yuri sighs no it's just me i just yuri pauses hmm i'm thinking a moment passes in silence and yuri sh yuri shakes her head I shouldn't be complaining to you all of a sudden. Don't be silly. I won't think you're complaining. I just want to make sure you feel welcome. It's important to... If it's important to that, then you can tell me anything. Well, I, I do feel welcome. Too welcome, I guess. 
it's not an issue with the club, it's just an issue with me. So I feel wrong to inconvenience you with it. Uh, Monica pauses and thinks. Well, what if we put it this way? It's my job as president to understand the needs of the club members, right? We're going to have all kinds of people joining this club. Hopefully, anyway. And learning about the diverse needs and interests of everyone will help me come up with club activities that everyone can be happy with. That everyone can be happy with? Not just only some people? Of course. I need to be looking out for everyone. Otherwise, uh, what kind of club would it be? I see. Yuri looks a little more relaxed. It signals to Monica that switching from a sympathetic approach to a pragmatic one was a good choice. Each individual truly does have their own needs. Okay. <sighs> Yuri takes a deep breath. I really like this. This does like such a good job of like delving into their characters and what makes them tick and like how just like different people work because in the base game they're very obviously designed after some pretty like stereotypical dating sim and Japanese culture in general like stereotypical character traits like we got the sundere and the shy bookish one and the the like dork uh, childhood friend clumsy one and club president like too good to be true Monica like they're all have their very specific roles that they fit into which is pretty like cliche and not exactly what real people are like but these side stories do a really good job of making them like so much more complex and interesting as people i really like these so far i'm a i'm a really weird and awkward person i've accepted that about myself i just don't know how to i guess connect with other people how is it so easy for everyone else how do you just make conversation about any arbitrary co topic. I can talk for hours about the things I'm into. Unfortunately, it's so much that I don't know when to stop. But for anything else, I just have no idea what to say. So, I understand that about myself. I'm just not good with people. I can't help it. So it feels like whenever I'm confronted with a new social situation, I'm either ignored or made fun of or taken pity on. And Siori falls into that third category. She... What? Hold on. You're saying Sayori's taking pity on you? Yuri nods. I just wanted to be treated like a normal person. If you don't like me or you don't connect with my interests, then just tell me. I can accept that and move on. Sayori is too nice to me. I'm so stupid for not realizing she would just go along with whatever I pushed onto her. Nobody deserves to put themselves through that kind of discomfort just because... Because they... Pity some weirdo who doesn't know how to make friends. It's the worst feeling. I hate it. Yuri's sharp words cut through the tense air. Somewhere in the middle of the conversation, the two stop short in the hallway, prioritizing the conversation over their original task. Monica looks at Yuri. Yuri looks only down, with her fists clenched. I think... I think you should tell her that. I, I could never say that to someone's face. It's pathetic. Sayori is different. Making people happy is the most important thing to her. I'm sure that's all she's trying to do. So if you're able to explain to her what makes you happy, then she'll do anything to make that happen. But that's the problem. What kind of friendship has one person always trying to cater to the other person's weird needs? I'm sorry, I'm making myself sound so... No, no, I, I think I'm starting to understand. Monica hesitates to finish her thought out loud. It's something that Sayori would be able to say better. Sayori is someone who will give anyone however much kindness they need in order to smile. But Yuri, who has difficulty accepting kindness, must must be driving Sayori to be even more assertive with her kindness, further exasperating the matter. It's really interesting how, how their personalities like contrast like that. Neither person is to blame, but it's an issue that can't be resolved without them understanding each other better. Siori wants to be your friend. I promise that. It's okay for different people to have different needs. I mean, Siori, she has her own needs, too. But good friends work together and can be what they need for each other. You just have to have good communication and talk about it. I don't have good communication. Yuri stops and shakes her head. 
I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. My head is just, it's so resistant to everything. I'm, I'm pushing such a kind person away from me because of it. Yuri pauses to think. I'm so tired of this cycle I'm creating for myself. I think I'm so afraid of people pushing me away that I push them away first. How thoughtless and immature of me. <sighs> Yuri takes a deep breath and exhales. I didn't mean for this to turn into a whole venting session, but I understand now that I just need to communicate with her. <laughs> You're totally fine. It's for the club, remember? You're just helping me make the club a better place for everyone. Yeah. Yuri falls silent again. It looks like she wants to say something. This, this kind of critical thinking is something I'm really bad at. You know, about people. So, thank you. Anytime. Monica smiles at Yuri. For just a moment, Yuri finds it in herself to meet Monica's gaze, returning a smi smi shy smile of her own. Aw, that was nice. That was really nice. Yuri and Monica finish replacing the old flyers with the new ones. More accurately, Monica did most of the work while Yuri followed along, but as the club room once again draws near, so does Yuri's confrontation. I can't do this. And yes, you can. It'll be great. <sighs> Yuri shies and shakes, shies, sighs and shakes her head. My gosh, I cannot speak. I'm never going to feel confident enough. I just have to do it. If I don't do it now, I never will. Yuri starts towards the door, but then turns to face Monica. You're not just going to wait up. Side, are you? <laughs> I can take a walk. Want me to get you a coffee or something? Actually, I prefer tea. I'd like to make my own though, so please don't worry about it. Although I suppose that's one downside of reading here in the club rather than at home. I don't get to drink tea while reading. Sorry, I guess that has nothing to do with this. Hmm. You know, now that you mention it, I bet we could get permission to keep stuff for tea in the club room. You can use, like, an electric kettle to heat up water, right? Would that really be possible? I'll look into it. I think it'd be great. Yuri smiles and nods with the thought. Well, I'll be back in a bit. Good luck. Monica waves at Yuri and then turns around and departs down the hallway as Yuri's smile fades once more. A moment of daydreaming about tea isn't enough to save her from the anxiety of the task that lies before her. But it must be done. Taking one more deep breath, Yuri timidly opens the club room door. I don't like the phrasing of some of these things. We've talked about cutting and timidly opening the door. Bad things happen. Stop giving me flashbacks. Yuri! Whoa, whoa, wait, hold on, I'm not done yet. She always shuffles a bunch of papers around. Uh, um, Yuri stammers, her words suddenly caught in her throat. At that moment, she realizes how Siori has been spending her afternoon. I wasn't expecting you to come today. I was really hoping to make it all the way through the next chapter first, but I got most of the way through it. And look, Siori holds up a sheet of paper. It's a page of notes, beautifully produced with indentations, categories, and even color coding. As Yuri sees it, her expression shifts from anxiety to despair. I was afraid you were getting disappointed in me, so I've been trying really hard. Stop. Yuri presses her fists against her forehead. Please stop. I can't take this. Yuri? Yuri's voice quivers in shock after having received the exact opposite response she was expecting. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yuri looks away in guilt. Did I do something wrong? I don't understand, so if I did something wrong, please tell me. Yuri shakes her head. No, it, it's me. I keep putting myself in these situations where people are afraid to treat me normally. If you don't like this kind of reading, it's okay. Please just tell me. I don't need to be treated differently just because I'm weird. But I don't treat you differently. I just want my friends to be happy. So I thought that if we did something together that you really like, I don't want your pity. Why did I do that? 
Yuri sinks to her knees. Her voice squeaks. I'm, I'm sorry. Tears of guilt and self-loathing begin to stream down her face. This isn't how it was supposed to go. Why is it so hard just to articulate your thoughts? Why do you end up pushing everyone away from you? Yuri's mind pounds with internal accusations as she shuts her eyes, unable to face Sayori or the rest of the world. She should leave, just escape from here before Monica sees her like this and before Sayori tells Monica what she did. But before Yuri can put any strength into her legs, she feels a warm pair of arms gently wrap around her from behind. Aww. Oh, it's gonna make me cry. Gabe, you're not supposed to make me cry. I know the last one almost did, and I should have expected it this time, but it's still catching me off guard. They start, they just hitch out of nowhere with this sad music, and look at her sad face. Oh my gosh, my feels. It's, it's too relatable, also. I relate to Yuri. And. I, re I relate to like all the dokies, honestly. They're such well-written characters. And look at this art. This art is so good. Like there's even like details of like the like chipped away desk and chairs and this is like really good art. It's okay. Sui whispers in a soothing voice. It's okay. It's okay. Overcome by despair, Yuri finds herself unable to protest or pull away from Sui's kind gesture. Yuri sniffles, breathing heavily through her clenched throat, trying with all her willpower to control herself. I understand. I understand that the things you're feeling in your head are different from the things you're trying to say. I know that must be what you're feeling right now. I promise, I understand that. So I'll give you as much time as you need. And when you're ready, just tell me your feelings and we'll talk about them together, okay? Yuri sniffles again and nods her head. She gives herself a minute to compose her thoughts and, and speaks while steadying her voice. I, I think... I think that I've gotten so used to people being weirded out by me that it feels like anyone who's nice to me is just doing it out of pity. I'm so horrible with people, so it makes me not want to believe that someone can actually like me for who I am. Yuri pauses, but... Sayori doesn't interrupt. Rather, she waits for Yuri to continue. I got so excited when I joined the literature club. I thought it was finally my chance to make friends through my interests. Because my interests are the only things I know how to talk about. It's all I have going for me. But then, whenever I catch myself getting overly obsessive in front of other people, it feels like I'm making a fool of myself. I hate myself for it. Ultimately, I just want to be treated like a normal person, but how am I supposed to expect that when I can't behave like one? I just want to learn how to get along with people and stop ruining things for myself. That's all. Yuri finishes her thoughts, feeling more steady after having gotten them out. So are you can... Feel Yuri's breath rise and fall from beneath her arms. Realizes that as well. What are not cute sad this is. Thank you for helping me understand you a little bit better. You know, you were so great at helping me while we were reading. So, I'll help you with the things that you need too. But, I feel like it would just be frustrating for you with how much patience I require sometimes. <laughs> That sounds kind of familiar. I couldn't stop worrying about that while we were reading. I was so afraid you'd get frustrated with me. But I would never do that. I did my best to reassure you by mentioning how I have a lot of patience. Yeah, I know, but my irrational fears just won't be quiet sometimes. I'm sure it's the same for you, right? You're so cute. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Irrational fears. They're so different, but so similar at the same time. That's what makes this great. Well, you know, there's no way you could frustrate me, because I already like you as the person you that you are. I know that you said you have a hard time believing that, but I promise that it's true. 
you don't have to be a social person for people to like you. I think you're really considerate in your own way, you know? Worrying so much about other people's feelings. We're all kind of weird. It's a literature club. <laughs> but it's the best part that we're all different and have different interests. Like, about the book. I'm reading it because I want to. I promise. That's what I really want. It's a bit of a struggle, but try not to mistake that for me not enjoying it. I mean, we could never discover new things if we didn't try them first, right? I want to learn the reasons that you love it so much. And in the end, if it's not for me, then I can say that. But I'll be glad that I tried it and learned more about it from you. Plus, you're like super duper smart, and I want that to rub off on me. <laughs> Nuri fights back a smile at that comment. Already, the heavy atmosphere surrounding her seemed to have evaporated through the caress of Sayori's arms. Your hair is so pretty. I always wanted long hair, but I was awful at taking care of it, so I cut it all off. Hmm. Nuri's tension relaxes. For once, she feels okay just listening. I didn't worry so much about saying the right thing. Siori, sensing Yuri's comfort, lets her rest. It must be so difficult for her to feel relaxed around other people, but if the literature club can make that happen, then it's something that she deserves to experience. Aww. Well then, based on my understanding of your feelings, I suppose I wouldn't mind if we were to continue reading. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. But we can stop at any time. If you truly don't like it, please be honest about it. I won't be offended. Of course. I'm not going to judge anything this early on, though. So we'll just see what happens. Oh, and... Um... It's not good to touch people without their consent first. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. Oh, you didn't. I mean... I suppose it was kind of nice. I was just saying. I'm back. Monica's back. I haven't seen you, like, at all recently. Sayori trots over to Monica. Ah. She whispers loudly. Can I hug you? Oh, that's cute. She learned. <laughs> sure, Sayori. Sayori wraps her arms around Monica. Oh, yeah. Yuri, it might be good to know... Suri can be kind of a hug monster. Ah, uh, hey, don't call me a monster. Artem Artemis is a monster. If he inherits the kingdom, it could spell disaster. Oh, that's so cute. She's picking up on the book already. Yuri laughs. Monica perplexedly looks between the two of them and smiles. Well, I'm glad you've been enjoying your reading so far. It's like our first real activity is the literature club. Uh, about that. Well, you've been so patient with exploring my interests. I think that it would be inconsiderate of me not to return the favor to you and learn about the things that you like. Yes! Do you like poetry? Are we going to get a new Yuri poem? Yuri smiles. Not today. That's okay. That's okay. That was really good. That was really wholesome. That was really cute. I really liked that one. Uh, piece by piece, we're getting, piece by piece, we are getting all the songs. So we're still looking for a specific song. It had to do with, like, teamwork or together, right? Something like that. I think I'll know it when I see it. But, oh, look at this. Oh, this is cute. Finish the side story understanding, too. I really like this wallpaper. That wallpaper's really cute. I like that one a lot. And then we got this, this new art. Sad, sad, Yuri art. Anything from here? No, doesn't look like it. All right. Very cool. Very, very exciting. That was, that was really good. That hit me in the feels again. Oh, this game is just going to repeatedly punch me in the gut in the feels, isn't it? We didn't get new mail. Which is interesting. I was expecting to get another one, but apparently not. And that was really good. Oh, next we get Monica and Natsuki. That's an interesting pair that didn't really interact much in the base game. Oh, I'm excited. 
we got a lot of fun ones left. This had this had a bit more Monica in it than I was expecting. I was expecting them to be like purely the two characters interacting together, but I really like the way that this went, where it's still a continuation of the overarching story, and it doesn't like force Monica out unnecessarily. When when she feels like necessary in the story, she's still in there, and I really like that. But it's still ultimately about Yuri and Sayori connecting and understanding each other, hence the title. That was really good. These side stories are amazing so far. And in the next episode, we will check out the next one. So look forward to that. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It helps out the channel a lot. And leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and are looking forward to the next one. And with that, I will see you guys all next time for another episode of Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. Later!